Hey, what's up, ladies? It's the relationship guru, Sid Pharrell. Now, I'm back again with another video just to give you ladies. Now, before I get into this video, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and you hit that bell notification so that you're notified every single time I post. And if you are a woman that needs relationship advice, or you wanna learn more about how to think like a man, or why men do the things they do, act the way they act, and think the way they think, then I encourage you to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me, link is in the description below, and I can help you out personally, one-on-one, -on -one, with any questions, concerns, or anything you have regarding your dating life, or relationship currently in general and also brand new on my website if you want me to coach you every step of the way step by step throughout your dating or relationship process and journey and you want me to become your personal dating coach long term then i have a special program just for you link is in the description below also and i can help you out personally again one-on-one -on -one with any questions, concerns, or anything you have regarding your dating life or relationship currently in general. And also, go pick up my brand new Girls Night card game. It's officially out. So if you're having a game night with your homegirls and you need something to do, then make sure you go pick up my Girls Night card game. It got a lot of fun questions and scenarios about love and relationships and everything all in between. So make sure you go pick that up. Link is in the description below, okay? And then on this hand, we got my brand new ebook. It's called Oh He's Toxic Period. And if you never want to be played, used, or manipulated by a man ever, ever, ever again your whole life, then make sure you go pick up that ebook right there because it's fire, okay? And again, link is in the description below for that also, okay? And also if you are a woman and you love love quotes, dating quotes, relationship quotes, and things like that, then I have something special just for you. I came up with my top 100, yes, 100 dating love quotes for women, right? So if you want to go get that, it's on my website. And again, as usual, the link is in the description below also, okay? So all that's out the way, and we gonna jump right into this video, and this video is titled, These are five ways how men can tell that you are easy to manipulate. Right, ladies? So these are my top five ways how a man just automatically knows he can pick up a woman who's easy to manipulate. If you're easy to seduce, you're easy to get over on, you believe anything, you're very gullible, or you're very, you know, naive, or you're very shy, you're very timid, you're very just afraid of everything, you know? A man can tell, he can literally sniff it out. If you are a woman that's easy to manipulate, you see a man, he know who to try. Every man, they know who to try. A lot of times it's that little shy girl in the corner or that girl that, you know, she's not too loud. She's not too aggressive. You know, the nice girl. A lot of times the nice girls are the easiest to manipulate. Or especially the pick me woman, the pick me over here, pick me. Those type of women are the easiest to manipulate because, hey, you volunteering to be manipulated. You're volunteering to be used. You want to go all out your way for me to make me happy, you know, so I can easily manipulate you. You walked right into it. Or if you're just a woman that, you know, you're just by yourself and, you know, a man walk up on you, he see you as an easy target. He might see you as a woman I could get anything out of. I could get sex from you. I can get your booty, of course. That's one of the number one things a man want from you is the booty, duh. Then he say, okay, hmm, maybe this woman got some money. What type of job you got? 
Oh, you got some money somewhere? Oh, okay. Maybe I can use you for your money. Maybe I can get you to buy me some stuff. You know, maybe I can get you to buy my video game, buy my shoes, my clothes, get my hair cut nice. I can get you to give me money to pay my bills. You don't know, but it's a lot of men. Women are not the only gold diggers. It's men that are gold diggers. It's men that prey on women that got money. And they want to manipulate women and use women for their money. I done seen it happen before. And I done heard plenty of stories and told me that they done spent all their money on a man. And he didn't even like her like that. Or he never paid her back. He asked to borrow some money. He never paid her back. Or he just took some money from her. Or he stole some money. Or she gave him money in hopes that... You know, I'm investing into this man. He need the money. I'm going to do this nice gesture for him. Only for him to turn around and bite her. And backstab her. And just use her for her money the whole time. Or the man use you for sex the whole time. You the whole booty call the whole time. This man, he ain't really want you for you. He just wanted consistent booty. He never wanted to be in a drought. You know what a drought is? A drought is a period of time when a man not getting no booty. So a man, a lot of men don't want to go through no drought or a period of time when ain't no booty being given to him. So a lot of men, they try to at least keep one woman around, at least one dummy around to give him some booty. You know, even if he don't like the girl, even if he never want to be with her, even if the woman not all that attractive, he might still keep a woman on the side for a rainy day just in case. You know, ain't nobody else picking up their phone to give me some booty. I'm going to just keep her around, you know. But he might use you for sex. He might use you for money. Or a man, he want to manipulate you to be doing acts of services for him, right? He want to manipulate you into cooking for him. This man say a lot of men, they ain't had no home-cooked meal since they left their mama house. You know, a lot of men, maybe they single on their own. They got their own spot, own apartment, you know, and they don't cook. A lot of men don't cook. A lot of men, they, they do takeout, you know. They go order DoorDash, they go order some Uber Eats, you know, or they go out and go pick something up, you know, fast food, whatever. And they never cook for themselves. So a lot of men have never had a home-cooked meal since they left their parents' house. So he might use you to say, hey, you know, I'm tired of eating fast food. Hey, you know, ain't nothing like a home-cooked meal, especially a woman cooking for him. You know, so he might just want to manipulate you to get those home-cooked meals. You always meal prepping for him. Anytime you cook your famous dish, he want to grab him a plate. Or he wants you to cook for him. Come over and cook for me. Or let me go over there and get a plate. But he using you for the free food. A lot of men, they want the act of service. They want you to invest into them. And your investment might not just be money as an investment. It might be your booty, your cooking, and then it might just be you cleaning up his whole house. You vacuuming his whole house. You Febrezing, Lysol in his whole house. You Clorox and Pine Saw. You just Cloroxing and fabuloso in his whole house. His whole house smell good. You folding up all his clothes. You hanging up on the hanger, all his clothes. You over here washing his dirty drawers with the boo-boo stains in them. He got all these boo-boo stains in his drawers. You do all that and he using you. A lot of men, they basically use a woman as a replacement as his mother. You remember how, you know, when he was a little kid, how, you know, his mama would take care of him. He looking for a replacement. He looking for another woman to take his mother's spot. He not looking for love. He looking for a woman to take care of him. 
He looking for a woman that's going to bend over backwards, do anything for him, and, you know, chase after him and build him up and take care of all his needs. And all he got to do is sit back and not do nothing. You know, just like he did at his mama house. When he was growing up, or even sometimes when they get grown, they still at their mama house, and their mama is the one taking care of them. Yeah, baby, you know you always got a spot over here, baby. You know I got your home-cooked meal. Your bed is the way it was all the time. You always got a chance or a spot to come back here whenever you get a chance. The house is yours, whatever, you know? And the, maybe the mama treat him like a king or treat, you know, that's her son. So, of course, a lot of mamas be babying their sons. But the problem is it may have enabled him as a man. And now he's dependent on another woman or women in general to take care of him just like his mother did as a replacement. Right? So, if you ask any man, you can ask any man, a lot of men. You can ask a lot of men, what do you think about a good woman? What is a good woman to you? Or what type of qualities does a good woman have? A man will either describe his mother or a slave. Basically, it's two things a lot of men, when they say, you might ask a man, what's a good woman to you? Oh, a woman, she got to be feminine. She got to cook. She got to clean. She got to, you know, be nurturing and kind and generous. She got to give me booty whenever. She got to do X, Y, Z. Sound like your mama. Sound like a slave. Sound like you want somebody to bend over backwards and lift you up and chase you and build you up and treat you like a king. But what are you doing as a man to deserve that? What are you doing as a man to even get that type of treatment? Because your mama, she did it just because you was her son and she had no choice at one period of time. And of course, you know, your mama got the unconditional love. So she just going to do it out of the kindness of her heart. But everybody else, that other woman, she not your mama. So she don't have to love you unconditionally. Ain't nobody going to love you unconditionally outside of God, outside of yourself, and outside of your parents. Everybody else, when you step foot outside that house, it ain't nobody's job to love you unconditionally. It's conditions. These all relationships are all conditional. Either we, well, a relationship is I get something, you get something. It's a balance, a relationship. Not just I give you something out of the kindness of my heart, but when it's my turn to get something in return, I don't get nothing. I'm empty handed. But I done gave you what you needed, but you don't give me what I need. And that's a problem. So, you know, a lot of men, they want a woman to be easily manipulated. A lot of men, I'm going to tell you what a lot of men want. A lot of men, they don't even like women. They like having sex with women. It's a lot of men, yeah, sure. They love having sex with women, but they don't like women as people. They only see a woman as a sex object. They only see a woman as something to play with something they can control, something they can have dominance over, something they can manipulate, but not as a person, as an individual, as a woman, as a being, right? They only see women or women as a sex object, and that's it. They don't even like women at all. They only like what they can get from a woman sexually, right? And that's a problem. A lot of men, they don't look at women and they don't care for women. They don't even like women, right? And it's sad to say. They don't have no respect. A lot of men don't have no respect for women. They think a man is up here. I'm the big, strong man. I'm, I'm at the top of the top. And you as a woman, you down here. And you better bow down to the king. You better sit down, woman. And be quiet. Don't talk back to me. Don't say nothing. And get your tail in that kitchen. And go make me a sandwich. And then deliver it to me. In a plate. And you better chop the crust off of it. 
so I can eat it better. You know? And you better serve me a beverage too. And when you done, rub my feet. And when you done, you can fan me, your highness, right? You can fan me, right? Because I'm your highness. I'm your majesty. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the manly man and you just the peasant woman. They even are a man that practices, you know, that men are up here, a woman's down here. A woman, she need to know her place. She need to be quiet. A woman don't have no rights. I'm the man, whatever I say go, and a woman need to sit down, be quiet, and listen to whatever I say. If I tell her jump, she better jump. If I tell her jump, she better say how high, your highness. If I want some booty, she better give me that booty right now. If I want her to cook for me, go cook me a home-cooked meal, woman, right now. Clean my whole house. Do my laundry. Rub my back. Rub my feet. Do whatever I say, right? But whole time, what is this man doing for you? That's the problem. He want all these requests. He's so demanding. He want all these special, you know, favors from you. But what is he doing to get those favors? What favor is he giving to even be able to receive those types of favors, right? So this man, a lot of times he not doing nothing productive in your life. It's just gimme, gimme, gimme. Let me manipulate you. Let me tell you what to do. Let me have power. You got to understand about a man's masculinity. Man's masculinity, especially men that don't know how to control their masculinity. A man's masculinity literally thrives on control, conquering, competition, Chasing, hunting, dominance, power, and manipulation. And with a fragile ego at the end. Their ego so fragile at the very end. And they sensitive. You know? So all of that is a man's masculinity. You know? So a lot of men, they don't know how to balance out their masculinity. So they just go full throttle when it comes to power, control, dominance. This woman better listen to me. I need power. I need control. You know, I'm King Kong and I'm a drum on my chest and show you that I'm a man. Yeah. And they get real loud and real aggressive. And they want to, a lot of men, they want to manipulate you. It's a few ways how they manipulate you. They want to manipulate you by breadcrumbing you giving you the scraps, the bare minimum, so you don't know your worth, or they want to talk bad about you, talk down on you, because they don't want you to know your worth. They say, you ain't even all that. You, you ain't never gonna make it. You know, you not even all that cute. You know what I'm saying? So they want to downplay you or downplay your success. You know, you want to go back to school, you not all that smart. You want to start that business, ain't nobody going to buy nothing from you. So they want to put you down so you start psychologically believing that I'm not good enough, right? And once a man get in your head and make you believe you're not good enough, now he can take power over you, right? And then, you know, a lot of men, they want to gaslight you. They gaslight you or they guilt trip you. They, they basically say, you know, so you don't care about me, huh? So you're not going to let me get that booty. You don't really care about me. But you say, but I'm tired. I'm tired. I done worked all day. I don't want to have sex right now. Oh, so you don't care about me, huh? You don't care about me. You never cared. You ain't never cared about me. You don't never care about my feelings. Gaslighting, right? Or if you try to leave him. So you, you try to leave this man because you know he toxic. So you done blocked him or you want to leave him. You trying to walk away. This man blowing up your phone. So you ain't never cared about me, huh? You ain't never cared. I was I was there. I cared for you and blah, blah, blah. You ain't never cared about me, huh? Just to make you start 
feeling guilty, like maybe I shouldn't leave him. You know, I do care. Maybe I should go back to him. No, he the one ain't care about you. So you doing the right thing by leaving. But he want to gaslight you and guilt trip you to coming back to him and doing whatever he say. Or a lot of men, they say, hey, they want to throw that submissive word out. You not being submissive, woman. You not being submissive to me. You're not listening to me. You not sitting down, being quiet. Translation, you not going to be quiet and do whatever I say. That's but what, what is submission? Submission. You know, you got to be careful about that submission word. Because a lot of men, they use that. You, you need to submit to me. You need to, you know, a woman should submit to a man. They use that as a control tactic to tell you what to do. And just so you can listen and obey whatever he say. Even though he not your daddy. Even though he ain't doing nothing for you. He not paying for nothing. He not paying no bills. He not, you know, making you happier. He not doing nothing productive in your life. And even if he is doing all those things, he still can't tell you what to do. You are your own person. And he don't even have simple respect. They go back to that respect. He don't even have simple respect for a woman just to tell her, hey, you have a voice. Hey, you know, let's compromise. Hey, you know, let me listen to you. Hey, you know, let's come to a common ground. Instead of be quiet, woman, it's my way or the highway. It's my way or no way. Have you ever met a man and he always wanted his way? Everything revolved around what he wanted to do, where he wanted to go, what he wanted you to do, what he wanted to watch on TV, what he wanted to go eat dinner at, where he wanted to, you know, go shopping at, what he wanted to do, what, what he wanted to do, anything he wanted to do, it was always his way, his way, him, him, him. He ain't never offered to hear your side out. He ain't never say, hey, what would you like to do today? Or, hey, where would you like to go eat? Or, hey, what do you, what do you want to watch today on TV? Or, hey, what do you, it's always just him, you know? And a lot of men, like I said, they narcissistic and they look down on women. They feel like women are weak. They feel like women are not equal to them. They feel like women are beneath them, you know? And a woman should never be beneath a man. A woman and a man work side by side with each other. That's how it should be. It should be the man and a woman both have their own roles and they both, you know, they both help each other. And nobody should look down on the other person. But the man, a lot of men, they look down on a woman just because you a woman. You know, they feel like a woman don't have no rights. A woman not supposed to make no decisions. A woman not supposed to have no brain. A woman not supposed to think. A woman not supposed to have an opinion. A lot of men, they don't like when a woman has an opinion. They don't like when a woman knows her worth. They don't like when a woman actually, you know, loves herself. When you love yourself, a man don't like that. He want to be able to control you. He want to be able to tell you, oh, no, nah, you know what? I don't like what you're wearing. That outfit you got on, mm -mm. you showing too much ankle. You showing too much shoulder. You showing too much elbow. You showing too much skin, too much leg, too much arm, too much collarbone, too much cleavage, too much booty. Take it off. Take it off. You better take it off. You better change into something more appropriate because I'm the man and I know what's best for you and you can't go out the house looking like that. So you better wear something else. Trying to control you. Trying to tell you what you can and can't wear. Like you ain't buy your own outfit for one. Like you not a grown woman that can wear whatever she want to wear for two. And for three, he not your daddy. So how he going to tell you what you can and can't wear? Now, if he's your father, your biological father, and he telling you, 
hey, this, that, and you under his house, his rules with, with your mama, that's different. But guess what? He's not your daddy. <laughs> so how are he going to tell a grown woman what she can and can't wear? You can wear whatever you want to wear. If you chose to wear whatever outfit you want to wear, that's your choice. Whether he mad or not, guess what? Majority of the time, you was dressing like that before you met him. Majority of the time, that same outfit he telling you to take off and go change was the same outfit that got his attention in the first place. Or the same type of outfit that got his attention in the first place. Now that you his girl... Now, nah, you can't wear that no more. Nah, you can't hang out with your friends no more. Nah, I'm going to isolate you. A lot of men that want to manipulate you, they isolate you. They want to isolate you away from your friends and family. Don't talk to your homegirl, Brittany. Because your homegirl, Brittany, she's single. And I don't want you to talk to her because she might influence you to do something or to do some single stuff. Or you might be attracted or you might attract another man better than me and that could jeopardize what I got going on with you. I'm trying to control you, but if you go out to the club and another man that's taller than me or got more money than me or more handsome than me or whatever approach you, you might leave me and now I ain't got no power no more. So no, you can't be friends with Britney. Cut her off. You know, or your friends and family that talk bad about me and say, girl, you need to leave him because he's not a good man. Uh-uh, cut them off. I don't need them in your ear telling you to leave me. Cut them off. You know, so a man, he just want to control your whole life. He want to control what you can and can't do, what you can and can't say, what you can and can't wear, who you can and can't be friends with. He want to control your whole life and manipulate you because he want his way. He want you to chase him. He want you to boost his ego. He want you to bow down to the king, to him, your highness, your majesty. But he ain't even nothing. So you should never bow down to a man. If anything, you the queen and he need to be impressing you. He need to be the one chasing you. But a lot of men, they they just feel like a woman is down here, a man is up here, and you better sit down and be quiet. And now he know who's easy to manipulate. A lot of men, they pick a victim. They know who to try, and they will literally pick out the weakest link. You know, you know how you used to watch that show? You are the weakest link. Goodbye. You know, you remember that, that show? You are the weakest link. You know, he feel like you the weakest woman. You the weakest victim. And he chooses you and preys on you because you're not going to give him no pushback. And you're a pushover. And you weak. And you might be, you know, just an easygoing woman that don't know her worth. And men love women that don't know their worth because they're the easiest to manipulate. Okay? So in this video, we're going to talk about how a man even chooses the victim that he wants to manipulate and control and dominate and all that, okay? So we go jump right to it. We go number one. So number one, the first type of woman, the first way how a man knows that a woman is easy to manipulate, number one is a woman that talks down on herself or belittles herself and a woman that cannot take a compliment. Okay, so a man know the weakest woman, one of the weakest women you can choose to manipulate, one of the easiest women you can manipulate, is a woman that's already talking down on herself. She already, you know, don't know her worth or she does not like herself. So she easy to manipulate because she don't have no confidence. So basically a woman that say, for example, I'm going to give you an example. A woman that say, you know, do you think I'm pretty? I'm not all that pretty, am I? You don't think I'm all that pretty, do you? I don't think I'm that pretty. Do you like this outfit? I don't know if I really like it or not. Do you think I'm gaining weight? Do you think I'm chubby? Do you think this? I think I'm getting a little chubby. 
Oh, my pimples. Oh, I don't like my pimples. Oh, oh, my stretch marks. I don't like my stretch marks. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to get into, I'm, I want to get back into school. I don't think I'm that smart. I might not get back into school. I'm not even that smart. You know, I might need to try something else. Or, you know, you downplay your own success. You know, you say, yeah, I graduated, but uh, it, it's not nothing. Or, yeah, I got a employee of the month, but I don't really care about that. Or, you know, yeah, I just started my business, but I don't think nobody's going to buy from me. I don't know if it's going to take off. You know, so that self-doubt, when a woman self-doubts herself verbally, and you telling this man how you don't think you're going to make it. You don't think you're pretty. You don't think you're talented. You keep talking bad about yourself. Down, down, down. You keep downing yourself. This man say, oh, this woman right here got low self-esteem. This woman right here, she don't even like herself. She done named off a 100,000 things she don't even like about herself. So she don't even like her. So... If she if she does not like herself, a lot of times she will seek out approval or attention from somebody else to tell her what her worth is. She already got low self-esteem. She already got low confidence as a woman. She look how she talked to herself. This man, he hear you when you in the mirror saying, oh, I don't like this. I don't like my nose, my forehead too big. Oh, this, that, this, that. He know. Hey, this woman don't know her worth. This woman is not confident. This woman does not like herself. So why would I like her if she don't even like herself? Why would I respect her if she don't even respect herself? She talking bad about herself. So guess who else going to talk bad about her? Me. I'm going to talk bad about her too. You already talk bad about yourself. You already call yourself ugly. So guess what I'm going to say? You ugly, right? If you already call yourself not smart, you know, a dummy, guess what I'm going to call you? A dummy. Guess what I'm going to call you? Now, that's when this man, he know he can talk bad about you or talk down on you because you talk down on yourself, you know? So you easy to manipulate because you don't got no type of self-worth. You don't love yourself. You don't hype yourself up. You don't appreciate yourself. You're not confident. You don't value yourself. You don't lift yourself up. You don't put yourself on the pedestal. You're not proud of yourself. You're not proud of your achievements. You're not proud of your accomplishments in life. You're not proud of yourself. You're not speaking life into yourself. You're speaking bad about yourself. So any woman that speaks bad about herself, Guess what? You easy to manipulate because you don't even like you. So I know if you don't know what your worth is, if you don't know what your price is, then I can tell you what your price is. If you think your price is zero, that's exactly how I'm going to treat you, like a zero. If you treat yourself bad, why would I treat you any better? If you talk bad about yourself, why would I talk good about you? You know, or or you can't take no compliment. It's a lot of women, you cannot take a compliment. A man might might tell you, you know, hey, you so pretty. You so beautiful. You so gorgeous, girl. You so fine, girl. Woo, you look so good. And you say, really? You think so? I don't think so. Look at me. I look a mess. Look at me. I'm not even all that cute. Look at me. Why you like me? Why do you even like me? If you questioning yourself or you can't even take a compliment, you just said everything but thank you. <laughs> this man told you how fine you were, how beautiful you are, how gorgeous you are. You could have just said thank you and that would have been the end of it. But you ain't want to just say thank you and keep it pushing. You said, nah, I don't really think that. I don't think I'm all that cute. I'm not all that. That man say, okay, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe you're not all that. If you think you're not all that, I thought more highly of you. 
but you thinking lower or less of yourself. So maybe I need to lower my expectations and lower my standards and lower how I view you. If you view yourself low, a man will view you low also, sometimes even lower. Because why would I value you? You can't even take a compliment. You know, if a man say, ooh, girl, you look good in them jeans, girl. You look good in them pants, girl. Woo. Or in that skirt, in that dress. Woo, your body looking good. Your booty popping out, girl. You look good. Woo. You know, and you say, nah, my booty not all that big. Nah, my booty small. Nah, I don't really got a booty. Stop lying to me. I ain't got no booty. This man say, okay, well, maybe you not all that fine. Maybe your body not as nice as I think it is. He thought your body was nice. He thought your booty was big. But you don't think your booty big. So maybe it's not that big. Maybe I was tripping. You know, or maybe you not as beautiful as I thought you were. You know, this man might say, hey, you know, congratulations. You graduated. And you say, yeah, it's not all that. Okay, well, why would I be excited about you graduating and you not even excited about you graduating? Or this man say, congratulations on your new position at work. And you say, yeah, it's not really the job I wanted, but whatever, I don't really care. This man say, okay, so you're not happy? All right, well... You always a Debbie Downer on yourself. You always so depressed. You always down in the dumps. You always talk negatively about yourself. You don't even like yourself. You always talking bad about you. You can't take no compliments. Somebody trying to tell you something good about you, you flip it around and say, nah, I'm not all that. You know? So if you can't even take a compliment, obviously you got low self-esteem because I'm trying to hype you up. And you hyping yourself down, you know? So why would I value you if you don't even value yourself? So that's why self-love is so important because people know, a man know who to try. And if you got low self-esteem, a man know I can treat you the way you treat yourself. Look at how you treat yourself. You don't even treat yourself with no dignity. You don't even treat yourself with no respect. You don't even love yourself. So why should I treat you any differently, you know? So that's why a man know you're easy to manipulate because you don't have no self-worth. You don't even like yourself. So why would I like you if you don't even like you, okay? So that's number one. So number two, the second way how a man can tell that a woman is very easy to manipulate, number two is you tell him about your past relationships or experiences and how everybody dogged you out. Yeah, so this is a problem that a lot of y'all women be, be having or be telling. Y'all talk too much. Let's say you meet a man, right? You and this man, you know, he knew, right? He might ask you, hey, what happened in your last relationships? Tell me about your past exes. Tell me about your old past relationships. What happened? Why'd y'all break up? And if you, if this come out your mouth, which you tripping, if this come out your mouth, but if you tell this new man, oh, yeah, all my exes lied to me, all my exes cheated on me, all my exes put their hands on me, all my exes cussed me out, they was all dogging me out, they all played me, they all used me for my money, they all mistreated me. They all walked all over me. They all left me for another woman. My ex left me for another woman and got married. My ex, you know, he kept lying to me over and over and over again. My ex, he used to always put hands on me and I had to walk around with sunglasses on. My ex, my last ex used to steal from me, used to take from me, take my money, take stuff from me. You know, all my exes dogged me out. They dogged me out. If you tell this new man that, what you think this man going to think about you? You done told this man about all the men that dogged you out and how you stayed with those men. Or even if you didn't stay. Even if you said, you know, I, I dumped I dumped them all. As soon as I found out they was cheating, I left. 
As soon as I found out that he was being physical with me, I left. As soon as, you know, this man was lying to me, I left. But that does not neglect the fact that it happened. It still happened to you. And it was multiple men. And multiple men, even the fact that they even tried it with you that one time, show that they saw something in you that they felt like they could get away with it. So, and especially if you stayed, if you stayed, if you say, yeah, my exes, he kept cheating on me over and over and over again, and I finally let him go. Well, this man that cheated on you four, five, ten times, and you finally let him go, what does that say about you? Or the fact that a man even dogged you out in your past, period. What does that say about you? That he saw or thought that you was a woman that could clearly be dogged. Even if you left him the first time, it was the audacity and the fact that he did it the first time. And he thought and he knew who to try. You know? And he tried you. So the fact that a man even tried you or the fact that a man got away with so much or multiple men in your past got away with so much, that shows that, huh, this woman, she used to getting dogged out, huh? So if I dog her out too, what's going to stop me from dogging her out? She used to be cheated on and she stayed all those times. Okay, so if I cheat on her, she probably going to stay with me. Or she didn't let men put their hands on her in the past. Hmm. So if I ever put my hands on her, she going to take it because that's what she used to. Or, oh, her exes used to lie to her. Okay, so if I lie to her, she's not going to leave me. Or if I lie to her, she probably going to stay. Or if, or if I lie to her, you know, it ain't going to matter, right? So a man will treat you the way how your past exes treated you. Whatever you tolerated in your past, a lot of men, that's why they know, hey, I can treat you the same way. It's just like a job. I'm going to tell you, if you don't believe me, it's, it's just like a job. You know how a job will ask you, let's say you're trying to get a new job. They might ask you, what did your last job pay you? What was your salary at your last job? How much did your last job pay you, right? It's a reason why they're asking you that. So they know it's a baseline of what you used to. So I know I can't go under that or... You know, I know that I might have to go somewhere around there to meet you, you know, in the middle, right? Or somewhere around where what you used to, you know, maybe a little bit higher or maybe just right on the money where what you used to. And a, and a job will ask you that. How much did your last job pay you? What was your salary at your last job? So they can know how much to pay you because I'm not going to pay you $100,000 and your last job paid you $50,000. Why would I pay you $100,000 and you used to $50,000? I'm going to pay you $50,000. Or I might pay you $60,000. You know? Just to say, hey, you know, whatever. But if you came to that job and said, hey, my last job paid $100,000. This, this other job, no. Okay, I can't pay her any less than that. So a job will pay you as much as what you were used to, basically what you knew you deserved. So a man will treat you based off of what you used to and what you used to deserve, right? So never tell a man the truth. If a man ever asks you what happened to your last exes or what happened to your past relationships, you never, ever tell him the truth. You always tell him, Hey, you know, it was a mutual thing. We wanted two separate things out of life. And, you know, we just decided that it just was not best for us. And we went our separate ways. You know, it wasn't nothing bad. It wasn't nothing, you know, it ain't no beef. It ain't no drama. We just w was on two separate paths in life. And we decided to make a mutual agreement to split up and go our separate ways. Period. That's all you say. So he don't know the nitty gritty and the details behind why y'all broke up. But if you tell him everybody dogged me out, well, guess what? Roof, roof. I'm going to be the next dog to dog you out too. Okay? So a man know who to try based off of what you used to. He know who to manipulate based off of 
the other men that manipulated you, right? Or if you tell a man that all my exes used me for my money and I was spending up all my money on all these men, what this man gonna say? Oh, you got money like that? You just be giving money away like that? Okay, well, let me see if I can get some money out of you. You let everybody else get away with it, so why can't I get no money? You gave everybody else booty, and you let them walk all over you and treat you bad, so why I can't do it too, right? So that's number two. So number three, the third way how a man can tell that you are easy to manipulate, number three is you don't speak up for yourself, and you don't set no boundaries. So... One of the number one ways how a man can tell that you're easy to manipulate is the fact that you don't even stand up for yourself. You quiet, you're shy, you're timid. You don't want to cause no confrontation. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't like arguing. You just want everything to be okay and you just let everything go his way, even if you don't agree with it, even if you're not happy, even if, you know, you don't feel good about it, you just say, hey, I don't even want to argue with him. I don't like arguing, so I'm going to let him have it every time. And you let him get away with anything and let him mistreat you and you quiet. Or this man talk to you crazy, you quiet. This man, he cheat on you, you quiet. You don't say nothing. This man lie to you, you you quiet. You don't say nothing. This man call you out your name, you quiet. You don't say nothing. Or you start crying or you sad and you go run in the corner somewhere. Or this man, you know, he put hands on you, you quiet. You stay. You let it happen. If you going to be quiet and, and never speak up for yourself, if you don't never voice your opinion, if you don't never stand up for yourself and check this man, you got to check a man every single time, no matter how big or how small. If it offends you or if you ever feel disrespected, you better open up the mouth that God gave you and verbally tell this man, hey, brother, you got me messed up. I don't know what you used to, but over here, you're going to act right. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you and I'm done. Goodbye. Peace out. But you ain't going to stand up for yourself because you're too weak. Or you scared. You scared of, you know, going back and forth with him. Or you scared that you might make him mad and he might not want to talk to you no more. Or you might lose this man. Or he might leave your life. Good. If he want to leave you because you won't let him disrespect you, let him leave. Because he ain't love you no way. If he loved you, he would have respected you. But if a man is disrespecting you and you scared of him leaving, he need to leave because he disrespecting you. Don't let nobody play with you. Don't let nobody talk to you crazy. Don't let nobody put their hands on you. Don't let nobody mistreat you. Don't let nobody cheat on you and lie to you and disrespect you in your face. You cannot tolerate any disrespect. If you give a man an inch, he will take a whole mile. If you give a man a little bit, he will take a whole lot. If you let him slide a little bit, he will ice skate all over you. So you can't let nothing slide. You need to learn how to check a man and speak up and voice your opinion. Stop being so quiet. You need to learn how to tell this man and open your mouth and let him know what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate, and what's the consequences that's going to be if he does not abide by your rules. And you can't care. You got to learn how to be heartless with a man. You got to learn how to be cold with a man. He going to be heartless with you. He going to be rough with you. He going to try to be aggressive with you. So guess what? Give him that same energy. Hey, brother. You can't bully me. It's just like a bully at school. A bully at school gonna let the bully take their lunch money. Here, take take the lunch money from the from the little kid. You know, and the little kids don't say nothing. But a bully, even the school bully, know who to try. The school bully ain't gonna bully nobody on the football team. The school bully only bullies the little nerds. You know, the nerds with with the glasses. 
Yeah, you easy to manipulate because you not going to give me no pushback. You not going to, you know, tussle back. You not going to speak up for yourself. You going to just let it happen. So you can't be the little kid or the little nerds that let 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 the bully take your lunch money. No, nah, ain't none of that. Take my lunch money and see what happened. You know, he need to know who to try. And he need to know that you're not the one to play with. So don't let no man take your lunch money like he a bully. Don't let no man take nothing from you like he a bully. No, nah, you got to stand up to the bully. And a lot of times the bully, he not never going to try you. Because he because most bullies don't never pick on nobody their own size or nobody that's actually going to, you know, stand up to them. Right? So that's number three. So number four. The fourth way how a man can tell is that you are easy to manipulate, number four is you have a hard time saying no. So if you have a hard time saying no and you always say yes because you a people pleaser, yeah, you a people pleaser. Better yet, you a man pleaser. You want to you wanna please a man that's not even pleasing you. You want to make him happy. You don't never want to make him sad or you never want to disappoint him or you care so much about his feelings that you neglect your own feelings. So you say yes to everything. This man say, give me some booty. You say yes. This man say, cook and clean. You say yes. Even if you don't want to do it, even if you don't even want to give him no booty, you tired, you don't want to give him no booty, but you give it to him anyways. Just to make him happy. No, nah, if you tired, you tired. Don't touch me. I'm tired. Or if you don't want to give a man no booty, you don't have to feel obligated to give nobody your body. It's your body. If he get mad, oh well, he just going to be mad. Who cares if he mad or not? It's your body and he need to respect your body. Or if he say, go cook for me. Can you cook for me? No, I don't feel like cooking. But, you know... But he get mad, and now you say, okay, I'll cook for you because you mad. No, don't cook for him. If you don't feel like cooking, you shouldn't have to cook. I don't feel like it, brother. Go make you something in the kitchen. You better make your own sandwich. You better call DoorDash and get you some food because I ain't cooking nothing. I'm tired, you know, or I don't feel like it. So don't never say yes every time or a man tell you, yeah, can you go pick me up? Can you pick me up? Can you take me here? Can you pick this up for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? No, 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 no. You need to learn the word no. You need to learn how to set boundaries. Part of setting boundaries is learning the magic word no. When you say no, especially to things that you don't want to do, that's how you know you love yourself because you're not going to just say yes just to make nobody else happy. You say no to make yourself happy because you actually disrespect yourself when you say yes to something that you really don't want to do. And you know, you know that feeling that you get when you agree to something, but you didn't really want to do it. So you feel bad about yourself. Like, I really don't want to do this, but you still do it anyways. Yeah, you don't even want to feel like that. You tell that man, no. And if he get mad, oh, well, let him throw his little temper tantrum like a little boy that he is, okay? But learn how to say no and stand your ground and don't do nothing in life that you don't want to do. I don't care who it is. If it's your mama, if it's your friends, your family, if it's a man, if they ask you to do something and you don't want to do it, tell them no. If somebody asks to borrow some money from you, tell them no. No, you can't have my money. No. I'm not going to pick you up. No, I'm not going to cook for you. I'm not going to clean for you. I'm not going to give you no booty. No, get your own. No. So learn the magic word, no. But if you but if you always say yes, then you the easiest target to manipulate. A woman that always say yes, 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 yes. And that just want to make the man happy. So yeah, you easy to manipulate because you always say yes to anything I say, right? So that's number four. So number five, the fifth and last and final way how a man will know that you're easy to manipulate, number five is you always question if you're good enough and or you're a pick-me woman. 
So you might always question if you're good enough. You might say, you know, do you think I'm pretty? Or tell me I'm pretty. You know, do you think I'm smart? Do you think I'm talented? Do you think that I can, do you think I can start this business? Do you, do you like this dress on me? Ha, huh, this dress look good on me, right? Look at you. You over here fishing for a compliment. You so desperate and you so thirsty. You don't even have your own self-worth and self-confidence to say, yeah, I look good in this dress. Why you need his opinion? You looking so hard, so thirsty for his opinion, for his approval to say, yes, yeah, you look good in that dress, baby. I don't need your approval. I know I look good in this dress, right? That's how you need to be. You know, you shouldn't even have to ask him. Do you think this look good on me? No, I ain't asking you nothing. I know it look good. That's because I'm wearing it. That's why I bought this dress, right? So when you self-doubt yourself again, or, you, or you're or you fishing for a compliment, you know, a lot of women, you might be fishing for a compliment. You might, you might on purpose say, you know, nah, this dress don't look good on me. But you want this man to say, yeah, baby, it do look good on you. It do look good on you. Yeah, it do. No, nah, it don't. It don't look good on me. Yes, it do. It do look good. You just so desperate. You want him to just validate you so bad. So you do it on purpose. You you downgrade yourself just to get that compliment. You know, a lot of women, you fishing for a compliment. And that's, and that's an easy target. You know, or you're a pick me woman. You like pick me, pick me over here. And you volunteer to be manipulated. So this is a woman that volunteers. The easiest, easiest woman is a woman that wants to be manipulated. The woman that's chasing the man, calling his phone, blowing up his phone, texting him first like a desperate woman. Good morning, handsome. Good morning. You know, calling this man, want to see him all the time, chasing him, spending your money on him to make him like you, cooking and cleaning for him to make him like you, giving him booty to make him like you. You need to look at your motivation and your intent behind doing all these acts of services. Because a lot of times you're chasing him because you want him to like you but he only using you and manipulating you and he didn't even have to try to manipulate you. You manipulated yourself by thinking that you can force yourself to make a man like you or value you or approve of you or appreciate you. And you need to put all that, all that into yourself, all that chasing and stuff, chase yourself, chase God, love yourself, love God. Stop seeking approval from a man and stop letting a man control you, okay? So, ladies, I hope you enjoyed this video. Those are my top five ways how a man will choose how he knows who to manipulate and who to try. And, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, y'all. Hit that bell notification, and I'm out of here. So, to the next video.